Welcome to this message of encouragement. Today I'm going to be talking about six ways to enjoy your life. But before I get started, I always like to ask those of you who are watching to please pray for our nation's leaders. Also, please pray for other people, for those that are sick, for those that have lost a loved one, for the homeless, for the lost. There's so many needs out in the world, and people truly need to be lifted up in prayer. So I always like to ask those of you who are watching to please remember other people in prayer. I wanted to share the six ways to enjoy your life. Um, I came up um, with this lesson the other night when I was doing my Bible study. And it was very helpful to me and I thought, well, you know, this would make a good video to be helpful to other people because I know that everybody wants to enjoy their life and uh, right now there are trying times and so, you know, we want to uh, enjoy life. So I wanted to share with you the six ways to enjoy life. Number one, run the race. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 through 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us, and let us throw off every sin that easily entangles us or traps us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So we're being told several things here. Number one, we're being told that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses from the spiritual realm. We're also told that we need to throw off everything that hinders us or every sin that entraps us or that is holding us back in life. That could be anywhere from uh, addictions to uh, being involved with people who do nothing but, but you know, drag you down. Uh, there's many things, you know, that you can throw off that would, you know, that, or get push away from you that would keep you know it from hindering your life or you know taking away your joy and we're told to run that race that is set out before us and and to persevere and to keep our eyes on Jesus that's the most important thing is to throw off these things that are hindering us these these schemes and these traps that the devil sets forth we need to throw those off and keep those traps pushed away from us and we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. The second thing we need to do to enjoy life is to fight the good fight. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 and 13 says, Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So we want to fight that good fight of the faith. And we also we want to remember that like when we were saved or when we were baptized, remember we made that confession in front of witnesses, our confession, you know, of Jesus Christ. We made that in front of many people when you know like when we were baptized. So we need to always remember that. And we've got to fight the good fight and, and never lose faith in God. We also need to remember that we can count on God to take care of our every need, uh, to supply for the things that we that we you know need and, and, and to never have to want for anything and, and to know that God will protect us from bad things um, from disease. He is our protector and our comforter. The third thing that you need to do to enjoy life is to stand firm in the faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 and 14 says, Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. I like how that scripture ends and do every 
thing in love. It's not only telling us to be courageous, uh, brave, and strong, and, and all the things that we need to do, but it's also telling us that everything we do, we need to do it in love. Because love brings about peace, joy, happiness, uh, just all the things that will complete you know, our lives and keep us you know, at peace. And, and so that we don't lose our joy. The fourth thing that we can do to enjoy our life is do not run from the battlefield. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 through 18 says, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. God is our strength. Always remember that. We have to seek our strength from God. It goes on to say, put on the full armor of God so that you can take a, a, a firm stand against the devil's schemes. For, and it says, for our struggles are not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against people. Our fight is against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So it goes on to say, put on the belt of truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, put on the shoes of peace, put on your helmet of salvation, hold up the sword of the Spirit, and hold up your shield of faith. The fifth thing that we can do to enjoy life is to maintain peace among the people. And you may be thinking, well, how do I do that? How do I maintain peace among all the people? How do we keep peace in the world? How do we as Christians do that? Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says that when, when the righteous rule, people rejoice and are at peace. But it goes on to say, but when the wicked rule, the people mourn in their suffering. So you may say, well, what can we do as Christians to ensure that the righteous are, are ruling or are in office versus, you know, the wicked? Well, you know, we can't control other people's hearts. But what we can do uh, for those, you know, that are in office that are, you know, corrupt or are, are not doing right and causing misery among the people, what we can do is let our light shine for Christ. It is so important that the people not live in corruption themselves. That's why the people are actually being just constantly dumped on by, by our, our leaders. We're just constantly, the little people are constantly basically being dumped on because, you know, they're not following the path of righteousness. Uh, the little people are, are, you know, they're lying, cheating, stealing. They're, they're doing everything that what, what you would say that the other people are doing or those that are in positions of authority. What the people are accusing, the, you know, the leaders of doing, the, the people, you know, out in the world are actually doing the exact same thing that they're doing. You know, they're, like I said, lying, cheating, and stealing. And so, you know, what do you expect, like I said, our leaders to do? It's like, you know, what one does, the other does. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, but like I said, you know, if we would be a light to the world, to let our light shine, to be righteous, you know, our leaders, we would see change within them because it's hard to, to dump on those, you know, who are living a good life, who are living a righteous life. Um, it's just, you know, kind of like ask yourself, you know, is it easier to be, to mistreat somebody who is, you know, has a bad attitude and, you know, they're coming against you and, you know, um, is it easier to mistreat them or somebody who has a nice, humble heart with a very pleasant attitude who, uh, you know, is uplifting? Well, of course, the one that you're going to want to, you know, bash or come against is the one with the, uh, the big mouth, the bad attitude, who's showing their self. That's the one, you know, that you would want to, you know, uh, come against. You wouldn't be, you know, more out even if you were, you know, angry with the person who had the humble spirit, the good heart. Uh, you know, you, that would sort of 
calm you down. And that's what I'm trying to say, that that's what would happen with our leaders if we were a better example and, and we were better witnesses. You know, we could call them, you know, upon their wrongdoing them. And there would be great shame upon them. But there can be no shame upon them, you know, when the ones, uh, you know, out in the world are doing the exact same thing that they are. So we need to rise above it, to be righteous, and to be good witnesses and good examples. And that is would be the way that we could keep peace among the people and to rid ourselves of the wickedness and the suffering that's going on. And of course, the sixth thing that we can do to enjoy life is to love the Lord our God with all of our, all of our mind, heart, and soul. To obey His commands, um, you know, to stay, like I said once again, on that path of righteousness. Um, you know, to, to be, you know, willing to, to, to freely love others. As, as you want to be loved, to treat others as you want to be treated. Um, you know, that this, these things that, you know, I'm telling you today in this video would change your life forever, and you would have that joy each and every day. You would have that peace within your life, and the turmoil that's going on in the world, you know, wouldn't just seem to matter. It wouldn't cause you to lose your joy. You know, if, if you know, if you would just do these things, uh, like I said, uh, to obey God, stay in the Word of God, to uh, fellowship with other Christians, push away from these TVs. Uh, it, there's there's a lot of lies coming off these TVs, these news articles. Push away from them and be around uplifting people, people who love the Lord, people who want to talk about miracles. There's miracles going on all around us, especially right now. God is showing us His love. He is calling people to draw closer to Him. He wants each and every one of us to be saved. God's desire is that no one to perish. So I hope that this message has been encouraging to you. I hope it's been uplifting to you. I hope that it also changes your life, that you will, um, you know, run the race, you will stand firm in the faith, uh, that you won't run away from the battlefield, and things like that, and that these things, like I said, they will change your life forever. God bless, and stay safe.